Having made appearances in video games and cartoons and now making a big MCU debut, Moon Knight is not really a well-known character. I find a lot of people are asking the question, well, who is Moon Knight and why should I be interested? In this video, I'm going to cover that. So stay tuned, sit back. This is going to be an epic episode of Infinity Rewatch. All right, so let's start by talking about Moon Knight's first appearance in the comics. Moon Knight's unique debut started in the pages of Werewolf by Night issue 32 from 1975. Before jumping into the story itself, here's a quick breakdown of the eponymous lycanthrope. At the age of 18, Jack Russell inherited the curse of the wolf from his father. When he turned into the beast, Jack's consciousness receded while the monster took over. He spent much of his time with his pal Buck Cohen, Sister Lisa, and the witch known as Topaz, written by Doug Monick and drawn by Don Perlin and Howard Perlin. The tale began with this new masked man beating Jack Russell's fury alter ego handedly, thanks in part to a bevy of silver-covered weapons. The story then shifts back to where all this began, starting with a flashback to the previous issue wherein the wolf attacked Jack's friend Buck, nearly killing him. After returning to normal, Russell was furious with himself and returned to his stepfather's house only to have Moon Knight standing there, waiting for him to arrive. Within that flashback, Moon Knight, aka Mark Spector, explained how he came to the house. He appeared before the board of a group called the Committee. They listed his history as a mercenary, weapons expert, and hand-to-hand -hand fighter before presenting him with the Moon Knight costume. Moon Knight would become somewhat of a regular guest star in subsequent years, showing up in The Defenders and Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man, before eventually getting his first solo series in 1980. Now, let's talk about the life of Mark Spector and the origin of Moon Knight. Born to a respectable family but eschewing its history and beliefs, Mark Spector cut his own path through life by becoming a boxer, a marine, and finally a CIA operative. Disgusted by the organization's practices and hurt by his own brother Randall's betrayal, Spector ejected whatever morals he still possessed and fell into mercenary work around the globe. During this dark time, he made friends with Jean-Paul Frenchy Deschamp, one of the only bright spots in the violent profession of a hired gun. Tiring of overthrowing governments and assassinations, Spectre entered into the orbit of an extreme terrorist named Bushman, who turned on him and left him to die in the harsh Egyptian desert. Somehow, the mercenary made it to a nearby ancient tomb and into the hands of Marlene Aluren, the daughter of an archaeologist murdered by Bushman. Near dead, Spectre rose up to find a statue of an Egyptian deity, Khonshu, looming over him and believed it to save his life. He proceeded to smash Bushman's operation with Frenchie's help and later realized he gained a new outlook on life. Spectre returned to the United States with his friends and set about creating not only a costume identity he dubbed Moon Knight, but three other personalities to aid him in his war on crime. Millionaire Steve Grant, cab driver Jake Lockley, and in more recent comics, a police-friendly role known as Mr. Knight. With Frenchie as his pilot, Moon Knight began to make an impression on the rest of New York City's heroes. So, what are Moon Knight's powers? Mark Spector's CIA career and mercenary work added to his boxing skills to endow him with not only strength and endurance, but also a high degree of tactical and strategic skills, as well as combat and weapons expertise. Beyond boxing, he knows several martial arts, is a talented athlete and gymnast, and can speak several languages. Unfortunately, these abilities are balanced by an uneven mental state that manifests itself in bouts of depression and multiple identity disorder. Over his years as Moon Knight, Spectre also had exhibited periodic demonstrations of supernatural powers such as enhanced strength during nights with full moons, prophetic visions and dreams, and the ability to drain another person's life energies through physical contact. Now, let's talk about his rogues gallery. The enmity of Inspector's life began early with the great chasm that grew between him and his brother Randall. During their time together in the CIA, Randall's double dealing with foreign powers exploded into outright war between brothers, resulting in Randall murdering Spectre's then girlfriend and receiving a beating so brutal as to psychologically scar him for life. Randall has returned various times to cause more grief for his brother, mostly as the villainous Shadow Knight. Moon Knight's other defining opponents include 
the terrorist Raoul Bushman, the corrupt politician who posed as Black Spectre, and the Egyptian deity Seth. In addition to the deity, Khonshu himself stands as a polarizing figure in Spectre's life, providing resurrection and new life, but also perhaps a chief component in Moon Knight's mental disorders. All right, let's talk about allies and crossover events. Moon Knight has aided various heroes such as Spider-Man, The Thing, and The Defenders. Also has helped the West Coast Avengers on a time travel mission to ancient Egypt. Has also been invited by Captain America to join the Secret Avengers. And in the Damnation storyline, Wong assembled Blade, Doctor Voodoo, Elsa Bloodstone, Ghost Rider, Moon Knight, Iron Fist, and Man-Thing to form the latest incarnation of the Midnight Suns. With recent events in the MCU with Wong recruiting Song Chi, I think we're actually going to see a more supernatural side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's interesting that Moon Knight takes